going to start now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It is indeed really good to praise and worship God together. All of us will be together. Our hearts, our minds, our focus will be one in worshiping God. Um, we all know that the pandemic really created chaos, fear uh, globally. But then we as Christians, we should not fear on the pandemic. But instead, we will choose to fear the Lord. Amen? Hallelujah. The Bible says, the plans of the heart belong to man, but the answer of the tongue is from the Lord. All the ways of a man are clean in his own sight, but the Lord weighs the motives. Commit your works to the Lord and your plans will be established. The Lord has made everything for its own purpose, even the wicked for the day of evil. Everyone who is proud in heart is an abomination to the Lord. Assuredly, he will not be unpunished. By loving kindness and truth, iniquity is atoned for. And by the fear of the Lord, one keeps away from evil. The Bible says, church, the fear of the Lord is to hate evil. And the fear of the Lord leads to life so that one may sleep satisfied, untouched by evil. And when a man's way are pleasing to the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. Hallelujah. Church, choose to fear the Lord. Let us not fear the pandemic. Let us not fear the COVID. But right now, church, let us choose to fear, choose the fear of the Lord. Hallelujah. There is light. The fear of the Lord leads us to life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. For today, Lord God, we will choose the fear of your loving kindness. This kind of fear, Lord God, is not, is not like the fear of the world that tortures us. This fear leads us to life. This fear, Lord God, is reverence unto you. This kind of fear is reverence unto you, O oh God. Kaya, that's why, Lord, today, today, hallelujah, we will worship you. We will choose to worship you. We will choose to sing songs for you. We will choose to focus only unto you and not on the situation of this world right of the world right now hallelujah come on church let us prepare our hearts let us focus our hearts unto god and together as one we will worship our god hallelujah thank you lord thank you lord Thank you, Lord, that you will put in our hearts, O oh God, the choice to worship you alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, O oh God. Thank you, Jesus. The song church is very simple. Though it may be new to you, but this is very simple. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You just sing along, or if you don't know this, just listen and we will just sing it back and then until you will you can just get along hallelujah the the the, the what is important what is more important is our hearts right now our hearts are worshiping god hallelujah do not focus on the word do not focus on on the, 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 if you can sing it, if you can get along, but right now focus on your on our hearts. Focus that our hearts will be worshiping God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We choose the fear of the Lord. We choose the fear of the Lord. Choose 
the fear of the Lord. We choose the fear of the Lord. We choose the way of the Lord. We choose the way. right now church are we still going to choose to fear this pandemic or we will choose the fear of the Lord we choose the way of the Lord and we choose the word of the Lord it leads us to life church if we chose God choose life right now church choose life it says, the Bible says, in the fear of the Lord, there is strong confidence and his children will have refuge. That's the assurance, church. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life that one may avoid, avoid the snares of death. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for that assurance, O oh God. Thank you for your word, O oh God. Hallelujah. And we will choose your way, O oh God. Because your word says, the one who says he abides in him ought himself to walk in the same manner as he walked, as Jesus walked. The way of the Lord is a stronghold to the upright, but the ruin to the workers of iniquity. Hallelujah. But the path of the righteous is like the light of dawn that shines brighter and brighter until the full day. Church, the Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. He will establish us, church, as his holy people, as he swore to you if you keep the commandments of the Lord our God and walk in his ways. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. 
Teach us to obey you, oh God. Teach us to walk your ways, oh God. Hallelujah. Psalm 119, 104, verse 104 says, From your command I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Psalm chapter 1, verses 1 to 2. How blessed is the man who doesn't walk in the counsel of the wicked, nor stand in the path of sinners, nor sit in the seat of scoffers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he meditates day and night. Hallelujah. Teach us your way, O Lord. Teach us to walk in your truth, O God. Unite our hearts to fear your name alone, O God. Here we are, your people, Lord. Unite our hearts to fear you alone. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. We choose the fear of the Lord. We choose the fear of the Lord. For the fear of the Lord is to hate all evil. We choose the fear of the Lord. We choose the fear of the Lord. We choose the way. We choose the way of the Lord. We choose the way of the Lord. Sing it from our heart, church. For oh, the way of the Lord is the way of we. We choose the way of the Lord. We choose the way of He who delights. He who delights in the word of the Lord shall be blessed in all of His ways. For the friendship of God is with those who fear Him. So we choose the fear of the Lord. We choose the word of the Lord. We choose the word of the Lord. We choose the word of the Lord, for the word of the Lord shall endure forever. So we choose the word of the Lord. We choose the word of the Lord. For the fear of the Lord is to hate all evil. So we choose the fear of the Lord. We choose the way of the Lord. We choose the word of the Lord. Yes, Lord. We choose, Lord God, your way. We choose, Lord, your word, O oh God. And we fear you, O oh God. We ask your people, Lord. We ask your people, Lord God, revere you. 
And thank you, Lord, that in the midst of this chaos, in the midst of the fear of the world, you have given us peace. Thank you, Lord, that you are the source of our peace because you alone is our peace. Church, He is our peace. God is our peace. If we will just focus on to Him and not what the word is, what the world is telling us right now. Indeed. Our hearts will not be fear, filled with terror. Because the peace of the Lord is not the kind of peace that the world gives. The kind of peace that the world gives us Will keep us stand strong in the midst of the storm. He is our peace, he, church. He is our peace. Right now, choose the peace of God. Lord, we pray, Lord, remove all the worries, Lord. Remove, O oh God, all the things that worries us, Lord, and replace it, Lord, with your assurance, O oh God. Replace it, Lord, with your peace. And we will just cast out, we will just cast everything unto you. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, it is all the, you that we need. Holy Spirit, bring back the joy. Bring back the joy of our salvation, O oh God. After all, this life in this world is just temporary. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Church, I know there are a lot there are lots of issues in our lives right now. Cast all those cares to Him. And He will be our peace. He will be your peace. You will experience His peace. Cast it all to Him. Cast it all unto Him, church. Do not hold on to those worries. It will just ruin you. Cast all that worries unto him and he will give you peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He is our peace who has broken down every wall. He is our peace. He is our peace. He is our peace. Who has broken down every wall? Cast all your cares on him, for he cares for you. 
Jesus Christ we will be filled indeed we will be filled with your peace oh God whatever happens Lord in the world we will stand still Lord God 
filled with your peace because we know that you are our God. We will stand in peace because we know our God is working. We will stand in peace because we know our God loves us so much, church. We are secured in God's love. We are protected in God's love, church. Be assured, be assured, it will come to pass. We will be filled with His love. We will be safe in His hand. And we will have the assurance of His peace. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Indeed in you, indeed in you, we find life. We find joy. We find love. And Lord, we will choose to be with you always. We are safe in your hands, oh God. We are safe in your hands. Thank you, Father. Our hearts are filled with thanksgiving, oh God. Our hearts are filled with worship unto you. Hallelujah. We will continue to worship you, Lord. Because after all, we are all created to worship you. We are all created, oh God, to revere you. Thank you, Lord, for everything. And right now, Lord, thank you for preparing our hearts to receive your word. May it be, Lord God, a good soil, oh God. So that your word that will be planted in our hearts will grow, Lord God. We'll grow healthy, healthy. And we will always apply your word in our lives. And you, Jesus, will be seen in our lives. As we continue to walk our lives in this world, you will be seen in our lives, oh God. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. We pray that our praise, that our worship right now has reached the throne of your grace. And thank you, Lord. It will be a sweet aroma in you. Our worship is a sweet aroma in you, oh God. Thank you, thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. All the honor, all the adoration majesty dominion kingdom authority belongs to you alone in jesus name in jesus name amen amen hallelujah Hallelujah. It's a wonderful thing to sing to the Lord so early in the morning here. And they're back at home in the Philippines so late in the afternoon. But we're so indeed very grateful. Uh, good afternoon po for ev to everyone. I'm looking at the screen now and I'm looking at some people who are online. Very happy to see um, everyone here. I uh, also see... Uh, uh, our dear brother Enoch also, who's joined us today. How are you, sir? Good to see you. Kuya Edwin, love to see you again, Kuya. <laughs> okay. Um, we also see Kuya Nick. Is that Kuya Nick? Yes, that's Kuya Nick. Nice to see you again, Kuya. Uh, I think there's something wrong with the camera. Uh, Kuya Alex is there. Uh, we see Kuya Mike. Kuya Judd! Nasan ka, Kuya? 
<laughs> you're gonna get out soon. We're we're excited to he to see you're going to get out soon. We're happy to see also Kuya Charles online with us. Uh, Kuya Rap, nice to see you again. Yung bagong lipat, ni ko na yung name. Of course, we have also Kuya John. Nice to see you there, Kuya John. Uh, <laughs> praise God. And also, of course, Kuya Glem. Lovely to have you, Kuya. I thought you were night shift. Ginagawa mo ngayon. Go to sleep. I'm kidding. Just stay with us for a while. <laughs> okay. I uh, won't mention everyone. Uh, we'll be able to greet each other right after the sermon. Um, I think it would be best to start off our uh, message today with a short prayer. So why don't we bow down our heads. Let's humble ourselves in front of our living and true God. Oh, holy God, mighty, ever-living, righteous, you are our peace. You are king of all. And today in the scriptures, we shall learn that you are indeed also our high priest. We ask that you would open the eyes, the ears, the heart of our understanding so that we may not only see this truth, we may not only hear, not only understand, but Lord, may it cause us to worship you. Lord, we need you. Guide us through your text today. And I thank you that there is no barrier between man and God anymore because you reign on the throne. For your glory and for your praise, we do this and ask for your help. In the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn with me to Hebrews chapter 7. And our text will be from verses 20 until verse 28. I'm reading from the New King James Version. That's Hebrews chapter 7 from verses 20 to 28. And by way of introduction, I would like to give a brief illustration of what this is all about. And just to give a common illustration, you think of um, human beings, the reality that we now live in, currently in a world where there is um, lots of regulations, lots of rules. I won't mention the exact reason why, but you think of wanting to go to the department store if you want to go to buy something right now you need to wear something you need to protect yourself and not everyone is allowed to go into the department store there are in the philippines i hear uh, a requirement of just one person to enter into the department store and after that person is entered into the department store that person everyone else has to wait outside and then the person has to come out and bring all of the goods by themselves by way of that simple illustration, I would like to um, bring into mind our text today. We'll be coming back to that illustration in a moment. Now, to understand the book of Hebrews, we need to be aware of certain things, in particular, the story of Israel. In verse 20, we see the first word, or rather the word that keeps repeating over and over again. In fact, in this short section that we're going to be reading through, it's repeated nine times. And the nine times that it's mentioned, it really means that it's something important. And that is the word a priest. Now, when we hear that word priest, the first thing that comes into our minds is the guy who has the... the <laughs> old man mentioned the, the, the religion, but he, he does something and... What he does, uh, he gives a sermon and something like that. But, but that wasn't really the initial meaning of this word here in the King James in the very beginning. So the title, let me, let me start off by giving a title. I've sent the title in the group here. And the title of my sermon today is, I Need a Priest. And his name is Jesus. And I hope that will be your truth as well. We all need a priest and his name is Jesus. Let me bring you from the year 2020 all the way back 3,500 years into the land of the wilderness before entering into the promised land 
two million people all around and it was the land of is the, the the nation of israel who was taken out by an amazing deliverance god taking them from egypt and now they're on their way to the promised land moses has just gone up to the mountain and he has convened with god and god decides by his mercy and grace to stay with the people of israel he wants to be in the presence of Israel. He wants Israel to be in his presence. There is a desire for a relationship between the nation of Israel and their God. It's so important to realize this, to remember this, because it will help us understand this title. It will help us understand the text that we're about to read. Now, at that time, God gave Moses instructions to build a tabernacle. If you remember, when we were doing games in the worship team, we used to draw the tabernacle. If you read through Exodus and then into Leviticus, you will find that the tabernacle was in place. And Moses, supposedly, when everything was in place, was ready. He wanted to go in, but he couldn't. And the reason was because God himself, who was in that place, made the entire tabernacle holy. Now, it's important to understand that the holiness of God is so powerful, is so radiant with energy, that it is dangerous for us humans to enter into that presence. And the simple reason why is because we are unholy, because we are sinners, because we are unclean. But God so desires for us to be in his presence. Otherwise, he would not have made the tabernacle. Otherwise, he would not have saved the nation of Israel to come to him. It would have been of no use, of no value. But God wants a relationship. And in a practical application here today, 2020, we have a practical relationship with God. But back then, it was completely different. So now, the book of Leviticus that was written, the entire book, became the set of standards that God had put in place so that people could be in the presence of God. Because the problem really, if I could use an illustration, is if you think of us ourselves, we are fish. If we were fish and we want to go on land, we couldn't survive because the atmosphere is different. We could not step on land because we were not land creatures, we were sea creatures. And in the same manner, we cannot enter into God's holy presence, not because it's bad, but because it's so good. And we have no place in that presence unless we do something. And here lies the old covenant, the old testament. The old covenant that God had instituted was 613 laws that you had to follow. And if I were to summarize them, they were basically two things. The first are rituals. You've heard of the rituals before. You shall not eat baboy, pigs. You're not allowed to eat pigs. You're not allowed to eat uh, squid. You're not allowed to eat uh, what else? crabs and so on and so forth. You're not allowed to eat those things. But also on the moral side, you're not allowed to do bad things. You must keep yourself morally pure. So the first step was to follow the simple rules of God, which incorporated being good people being a symbol of life because God himself is life and everything else just meant death. So that's the first step. And the second step was to give offerings. Now I want to make a distinction. The first step made us pure and clean. The second step made us holy. There has to be a very clear distinction because difference between purity and holiness is to be pure you simply needed to take a bath. You needed to maybe confess. You needed to stop doing the bad things and stay in a state of purity. Okay? You don't uh, have sex with your neighbor. You don't, uh, a neighbor's wife, rather. You don't uh, um, steal. You don't lie. All of these things, those were part of the ritual moral law. And the second one was of making you holy. And there is only one way for a human being to be made holy. The only way is to be exchanged by a sacrifice. There has to be something that will take your place. And that was in Old Testament times, normally, a goat, sheep, bulls, 
All those kinds of offerings that God had required at that time. Now, you might be wondering, does God like to kill animals? And the obvious answer is no. God is not a God of destruction. He does not want to destroy his creation. But when it comes to the value of human life versus the value of animals, God decided that he gives more value to humans. So that instead of a human being dying, he gives an animal in place of the human. So that the sacrifice covers for the sins of the human being. I hope that's clear. Now, I want also for every one of us to imagine yourself right now as if you were an Israelite back then. Okay? Imagine yourself as an Israelite 3,500 years ago, almost 5,000 kilometers from Qatar. Imagine yourself being an Israelite. You had 613 laws to follow. In the end of the book of Leviticus, it said, if you will follow these laws, you will be blessed. If you will not follow these laws, if you allow yourself to be unholy, if you allow yourself to be impure, while you were in the very presence of God Almighty, you would be destroyed. Now picture that in your head. In other words, that means this obedience to this law was life or death. Life or death. You follow, you live. You don't follow, you die. It was as simple as that. And not only would you die, you would suffer curses. And you might want to say, that's unfair of God. Oh, my dear friend, God promised exceeding great blessings for all who obeyed. So that in like manner, as a consequence, if you would not obey, you would have exceeding great curses. Now imagine yourself not an Israelite. You're not an Israelite. You are simply a Gentile, which we really are. We are Gentiles. We are not Israelites. Imagine yourself being a Gentile. The nation of Israel is in front of you. They have a real amazing relationship with God and you're outside. If you are an Israelite, you have hope because you have a covenant. You have a relationship with God. But if you're outside of the covenant, you have no hope. You have no relationship. So that you're hopeless here. So many would want to come in here. But the problem is, 613 laws. The Israelites could not keep even one. How could we expect to keep even one? And that is the dilemma of Leviticus. Rather, the dilemma of this book of Hebrews. Now we go back, fast forward in time. After that introduction, I just wanted you to understand the importance of the law of God. Now, there is also one more aspect that we have to understand before we get to the main text. You have rituals and you have sacrifices and offerings. The problem is you don't know the sacrifices. You don't know the offerings. You don't know the rituals. You're not a person who is skilled in administering all of these. So what do you need? And the answer, my dear brothers and sisters, you need a priest. I hope you can understand. The priest's role was that he had to wear clothes, he had to be morally and physically pure, and he had to offer a sacrifice for himself so that he could represent the nation of Israel to God Almighty when he entered into the tabernacle to offer worship. And in the same manner, when he went out of the tabernacle, he would represent God Almighty with all his teachings, with all his laws, and with all the holiness to the nation of Israel. So these three things are mentioned in the book of Leviticus. The rituals, the sacrifices, and the priest. If you want to understand the book of Leviticus, it simply is, how we can live in the presence of God without being destroyed. And we have 
in that book, priests who were assigned different tasks to help with the people to understand what needed to be done in their daily lives and for people to offer the right sacrifices to make them holy. Once more, let me make absolutely clear that there is a level that you have to be which is pure and then there is the holiness level. To be pure, let there be no distinction. You have to follow God's moral standard. But to be holy, you have to have a sacrifice on your behalf. I hope that's clear. Now, when we come into the New Testament, we realize that at 70 AD, that, I mean, this year, 2020, you remove back 20, uh, 2,000 years ago, 70 AD, after the death of the Lord Jesus Christ, the temple in Jerusalem was destroyed. Today, 2020, 2,000 years later, there is a mosque on the top of that place. In Jerusalem, a mosque is placed on the place where the temple used to be. What is the significance? The temple was the designated place where God had ordained all sacrifices to be given. You were not allowed to give any sacrifice in any other place except at the tabernacle. In Jerusalem, it was what you call the temple. And because the temple was destroyed, my dear friends, that means there was no more sacrifices. Imagine again yourself being an Israelite. I can probably follow so far all of the laws of God, but at the same time, I cannot make any sacrifice because there is no place for me to sacrifice. God will not allow any other place of sacrifice except the temple. And if that's the case, then my dear friends, we are only at most pure. We can never be holy. If we are Israelites, if we are Jews, then that would be our feeling. We cannot be holy. We cannot have true fellowship with God. How much more would the Gentiles feel left out? Now, in this situation, everything seems impossible. There's no other way for a human being to get to the presence of God unless he is holy. That's why the scripture says, Be ye holy, for I, the Lord, am holy. If we try to enter into God's presence in our unclean, unholy state, we would be destroyed. That's why in the book of Isaiah, you remember when Isaiah was transported, teleported up into heaven itself, he said, woe to me, for I am a man of unclean lips. I am dwelling with the people of unclean lips, and I, my eyes have seen the Lord. He felt and knew and trembled. And I pray that that would be a trembling feeling for you as well. But my dear friends, beloved in Christ, there is hope. With all this in the background, I come back to the main title of this message. I need a priest and his name is Jesus. And this section that we're about to read now, going into the section, into the scripture itself, will prove to us that Jesus Christ is our priest, and he does this. Brethren, realize that the reality is that once upon a time, 3,500 years ago, there was God who went on planet Earth, and his surrounding area was holy, and people who wanted to enter into his presence to be with God Almighty had to be holy. And now there is a different covenant. There is a different way. There is a new covenant, a new testament, a new way. And this should spark joy in our hearts because now it's not too difficult. Let me show you how. We go now to our first verse in verse 20. It says here, inasmuch as he was not made a priest without an oath, and then if we look at the next verse, in verse 21, it gives an explanation of what he's saying. Because in the first verse, he's saying, Jesus, he's de describing Jesus. The Lord Jesus was not made a priest without an oath. 
What is an oath? An oath is a promise. Who was the one who made the promise? It was God. Let's read. It says, for they have become priests. Who are they? Those are the Levites. They become priests without an oath. But he with an oath by him, him being Yahweh, that's God who made the oath, who said to him, who is he talking to? To his son, Jesus Christ. He says, the Lord has sworn. Look at the note. Notice the capitals on all these words. L-O-R-D is all capital. That means that he's talking about Yahweh, our God, Yahweh has sworn and will not relent, meaning he will not change his mind. You are a priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. I won't go too deep about this story of Melchizedek. You can find a lot of information in Genesis 14. You can study about him in the Psalm, Psalm 110. You can even read a little bit more about him in this, the next chapters, and particularly in chapter 7. But what we need to understand here is that Jesus Christ is our priest by an oath, by a promise. And if we look at the next verse, in verse 22, it says that he is, by so much more, Jesus has become a surety of a better covenant. Now, back up for a moment. You remember the old covenant was me, I am going to do certain things, I have to follow certain laws, I have to offer a certain kind of sacrifice. And when I do all that, God will accept me. Otherwise, if not, I would be cursed, right? The problem is there is now no temple, no place for me to offer a sacrifice. The best I can do perhaps is just to be pure, but I don't have a place of sacrifice. So I'm in trouble. But now there is a new covenant. There are six things that make Jesus our priest and not only a priest, a better priest, better than the old covenant. The old covenant we did away with. God made a new covenant because the old covenant could not help anyone. There were so many things that lacked, but this new covenant is so much better. The first reason that it is better is because Jesus was appointed by God forever. He has become a surety. What does it mean, a surety? The word surety here, it simply means that he is a guarantee. In the New Living Translation, the word used there is guarantee. There is a guarantee that you will have a priest forever. Let's give a clap offering to God. Hallelujah. I mean, doesn't that bring you joy in your heart? You have a priest forever. Brothers and sisters, you have a priest forever. I don't know. I, I don't know if, if you're getting the point. You have a priest forever. If you have a priest, that means there has to be a place where there will be an offered sacrifice. But we'll get to that in a minute. But the very fact that you have a priest is so valuable, so precious, because you realize there's no way for you to go to heaven without this priest. This priest is there forever. I remember when I was young, I had a fear. I woke up crying one time because I was running around in my dream and I was looking for my father. I couldn't find him. And I said, Father, where are you? And I had such a dread. I had a fear of death. I had a fear that my family would die, that I would lose the ones I loved. But this is the beauty of Christ. He will never die again. He lives forever. And he was appointed by God Almighty to live forever, for he is God. You have a priest who will teach you the rituals that constitute a pure life, and you have a priest who will offer sacrifice. Let's move on. We move to the next verse. In verse 23, we see the words, also, there were many priests because they were prevented by death from continuing. So really, the main point there simply is that in the Old Testament time, there were so many different priests who had to be ordained. And after a while, the, the retirement age of a priest was 50. He had to retire. Someone else had to take his place. And then he had to retire and someone had to take his place and so on and so forth. You would have a continual set of priests who would come. But in the next verse, we see the contrast 
of how blessed Jesus Christ is. If we look at verse 24, it says, but he, because he continues forever, it's talking about Jesus Christ, has an unchangeable priesthood. Again, it's such a blessed thing because our priest doesn't change. Not only is he the author of a new covenant, he never ever changes. I, I hope it's, it's, it's making an impact in your life. Brethren, your priest who lives forever, who will always be there for you, does not change. He's not going to be good in one minute, he's not good, and then bad in another minute. He's not going to be absent for a while, and then when you need him, then he'll be present. No, he's there continuously. And that's why in the next verse, in verse 25, it says, therefore, so everything that we've been talking about, therefore, this is the conclusion of it. He, that's Jesus, because he continues, oh, sorry, therefore he is also able to save to the uttermost. What does that mean? The word uttermost or save to the uttermost, if you were to summarize it in one word, it means complete. He is able to save you completely to, for those who come to God through him. You remember the point, the function of the priest. The function of the priest was to mediate God and man. There is a priest who would bring the offering to God so that he would be, the person would be accepted by God. The priest's role was so important that they had no other way to approach God at the time. But here we see that through Jesus Christ, all who come to God through Jesus Christ might be saved incompletely. That's why we see in John chapter 14, verse 6, the most, one of the most favorite memory verses. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father but by him. Such value is there in this priest. Jesus is a priest, and we need him. Now look, he also says in the same verse, the word since, meaning he is able to save all because, what's the reason? All, he, he always lives to make what? He makes intercession for them. Do you realize that at this very moment, your king is interceding on your behalf? Such a blessed assurance. He's not sleeping. He's interceding. What does his intercession look like? In the book of John, before the betrayal of the Lord Jesus Christ, there is a story, a section of that story, where Jesus says to Peter, Peter, Satan has asked for you. He wants to sift you like wheat, meaning he wants to destroy your faith. And then he says, but I have prayed for you that after you have fallen, or rather, rather after you've returned, after you've recovered from this, strengthen your brethren. The only reason why Peter could be Peter is because Jesus Christ prayed for him. And the only way you and I will ever make it to heaven is that our priest forever prays for us. Isn't that remarkable? Isn't that amazing? Be blessed, brothers and sisters. This message is about exalting God. The word exalt, E-X-A-L-T. The word exalt comes the word, from the word altitude. A-L-T, meaning to lift up. We are exalting God. We are lifting up God. We are gloriously, we are, we are lifting God's glory up. We can see his glory now. He lives forever. He is the author of the new covenant. He forever intercedes on your behalf so that he can save you completely. So that you have an assurance of your salvation. We move on to the next verse. Verse 26. For such a high priest was fitting for us who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and has become higher than the heavens. The point that he's making in this particular verse is he 
can save us. He can do all these things because of his godly character. Now imagine in the Old Testament, just jumping right back, there were so many priests and all these priests, they had different characters. Some were good, some were bad, some were punctual, some were uh, lazy. There were so many different kinds of priests. But this particular priest was unlike any other. He is holy. The very fact that Jesus is holy completely makes him better than all other priests that have ever lived. He is harmless, not in a sense that he cannot hurt anyone. Our God, Jesus Christ, can send us to hell on the day of judgment. Rather than that, what it means is that he does not cause harm to those whom he's saving. He doesn't want to harm us. He also mentions undefiled. You know, we can be defiled. The priests of the past can be defiled. They can think a bad thing. They can do a bad thing. They can touch a dead animal. And we can all do those kinds of things as well. But Jesus Christ was completely different because he kept every single law. And that's why he is undefiled. It says also that he is separate from sinners. In what sense? Because our Lord Jesus Christ never, ever sinned once. You see, all of us, you and I, we are the sons of Adam who made the first sin. Contrary to popular belief, it isn't Eve who made the first sin. It was Adam because he had the responsibility over his wife. We who are the sons of Adam, we who are those following in the bloodline of Adam, all sin by nature. But Christ Jesus, because he had no blood of aid of Adam, but rather was of the Virgin and of the Holy Spirit, is sinless. And he could be sinless and is sinless forever. And lastly, he says, and has become higher than the heavens. Simply put, Christ, our Lord Jesus Christ, sits at the throne of God on his right hand. And there he intercedes daily for us. That's an amazing thing truth. Christ is far better than the old covenant, than any priest that has ever lived because they all die. For the character, Christ, his character is impeccable. And that was our high priest who can intercede for us and he can make us saved. He can complete our salvation. In verse 27, <clears throat> it says here, who, meaning pertaining to Christ, does not need daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifices. And first for his own and sin, for his own sins and then for the people's. For this he did once for all when he offered up himself. Now, there are a few questions here. Look at the contrast first. The contrast is you have the Old Testament priest who, before he entered into the tabernacle of God, before he could bring a worship offering to God, he had to pay for his own sins first. After that, he had to pay for the sins of all the men and all the women in the, in the, the two million people of Israel. Then he would enter into the camp, into the tabernacle. But Jesus Christ is different. He didn't have to do that. Instead, because he was already clean from the beginning, because he was holy and righteous, he didn't have to pay for his own sins at all because he had none to pay for. And then he paid for sins of everyone once. Now the main question that came in my mind when I read this was, why is it that he, can, he only pays once? And the simple answer is because he only has one body to pay with. And because that body, which is his own life, was sufficient, God has elevated him and placed him in his throne of glory. And now the Lord Jesus Christ waits until all of Christ's enemies will be put under his foot. And they will be. He says in the verse, he did it once for all when he offered up his, himself. And that includes you and me. Christ, when he offered himself on the cross on Calvary, paid 
the ultimate sacrifice, so that all those who believe by faith would be holy. Brethren, see the difference of the covenants. The first covenant, I need to do something, I need to offer up something, I need to be obedient, I need a priest, I need all these things in order so that I will be blessed by God. If I don't do any of these, I will be destroyed. And now look at the covenant that Christ gives. Christ offers sacrifice. Christ lives the perfect life. Christ is righteous in every way possible. He offers himself up and dies on the cross. And he resurrect, he's resurrected and lives in the throne of God forever and ever. And all we need to do now is to believe by faith, repenting of our sins and trusting in Christ's work on the cross. Isn't that a wonderful covenant? And that means, brethren, that every single law in the Old Testament does not apply anymore. We are free from the law of the old covenant. But let me make it clear. We are bound to the law of Christ. And his standards are higher than that which was set in the Old Testament. The Old Testament made us aware of our sins. But the New Testament cleanses us. It's the only way for us to have salvation. And this was secured for us by Christ on the cross. Isn't that amazing? This is the beauty of this amazing high priest who is in heaven. And in the last verse we see in verse 28, the law appoints as high priests men who have weakness. Again, he's describing all of the weakest parts about the priests. In verse 28, all of the priests that came before Christ were weak. They had sins, they were unclean, they were unholy. But Christ being maximus, everything about God maxed out. Jesus Christ, holy, righteous, clean, everything about him, perfect. Was the perfect offering and the perfect sacrifice. It says in verse 28, the law appoints as high priests men who have weakness, but... The word of the oath. Whose oath? The oath from God the Father, Yahweh. Which came after the law, which is about 100 years after, appoints the Son. The great difference is human priests, Son of God. Human priests, Son of God. You can expect perfection in the Son of God. You won't expect it here. And God offers this in the New Testament. God offers the Son of God, the perfect priest, far better than any of the priests of the past, far better than the old covenant. This is the new covenant, brethren. He has been perfected forever. Now, what is the practical application of all this? Remember, if I were to summarize, there are basically six things that make Christ better than the Old Testament. And the reason why we need Christ, why we need this priest and no other priest, why we must come through God's ordained way, which is Jesus Christ and no other way. The first is he was appointed by God to be a priest forever. That's the first one. The second one is he lives forever. He died once and after that he resurrected. Third is because he can save completely, because his priesthood never changes. Fourth, because of his character, which is perfect for being our priest, our mediator, our representative to God. Fifth, because his offering is better than any other offering. For you see, the blood of goats and the blood of bulls cannot completely wipe away all of our sins but the blood of Christ can. And lastly, number six, because he is the son of God. What is the practical application in our life now? The application is that we must realize, brethren, how much we need Jesus Christ. There is a priest in heaven. His name is Jesus, and we need him daily. 
we must worship him we must desire him we must thank him for what he has done he has taken away the law i mean imagine brothers if not for christ jesus we would be stuck with the law imagine that until now 2020 the temple was there imagine jesus christ our lord never came imagine israel had convinced the entire earth the entire gentile population that you needed to become jew you need to get circumcised you need to follow kosher diet you need to follow all these laws so that you would be presentable to god so you'd be pure so that you'd be holy and you have to slaughter all these animals that wasn't god's desire because he found how weak we are so he made a way in the new testament a new heart he has given us with new desires so that the law is not applicable to us anymore but let me be clear there is a higher standard a higher law if back then we could not murder now we cannot even hate if back then we should not commit adultery now we cannot even think about lust back then we should not lie now god says don't even swear don't even say promise i promise don't even say that that's the standard of morality that god has now but thanks be to god that christ fulfilled the law that Christ made a way. And now because of that, as you read through chapters 8, 9, and 10, you will find that the veil was torn and we have access to the throne of grace. Back in the Old Testament, only the priest was allowed to come inside the very presence of God in the tabernacle, in the temple as well. But now because the veil has been torn, because Christ made the ultimate sacrifice, because he's interceding for us, because he's made us permanently holy. We can enter into the throne of grace in our prayers. Did you know that you are holy? And it isn't because of what you did, but because of what he did. So I pray that we exalt, we joy in this truth. This truth must cause us not to go away from Christ, but to draw us near to him. Brethren, don't be like others who have failed to follow Christ, not realizing the value of Christ. He is there to help you. The application of this is to be so blessed that you would pray to him, you would trust in him, that you would love on him, you'd follow his ways because this is not difficult he has given you a new heart he has made you new do not go to the old ways don't go back to the way you were that's our message today and i hope that with all this truth that we have realized today how blessed we are now in 2020 and we have a god in heaven who forever intercedes for us i pray that you would continue to read your bible and that you would continue to see the glories of christ the next chapters you will read about christ being the greatest priest and this is essentially the entire message christ is the greatest priest he's better than them all and we need him every day let's pray heavenly father Thank you for your mercy. You have given us a way through your son, Jesus Christ, holy, blameless, harmless, exalted in heaven, sinless. Oh, holy God, you have made a way for us so that we Gentiles might partake in that blessedness of being in your presence through the holiness and the holy sacrifice of your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, we need our priest jesus christ we need our mediator we need the one who is the savior of our soul who can bring us to complete perfection we need you lord jesus to intercede for us every day 
forgive us, O oh Lord, for many things that we've been doing in our lives that are contrary to your ways. And we pray that your intercession for us will be our joy. We pray that your very presence in your throne will give us reason to glory, glory that our King is over all things. And we pray that all this assurance will lead us to follow you every day. Let us not be like those who've fallen, O oh God. Let us not be like those who will backslide. Please, Lord, keep us. Pray for us, and we pray that you would continue to intercede for us. Thank you so much, O oh Lord. And I thank you for all my brothers and sisters who've heard this message. I pray that it would impact their lives as you've impacted mine today. Thank you, O oh King of Kings. We ask all these in the name of Christ Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen. God bless you all. Kan mau kita yang mana? Hmm, okey tak okey. Pas tu kait ojo. Hello, good morning, brothers and sisters. Uh, can you hear me? Okay. So, uh, good morning, brothers and sister. Good morning, Qatar. Good afternoon. Ah, uh, good, good good morning, Qatar. Good afternoon, Philippines. So while our brothers and sisters here are preparing for the symbols, for the instruments that we are about to partake, may I invite everyone also in your respective homes to gather, please prepare your uh, bread and cup also so that we will partake together in unity. Amen. So while we are preparing, as we will read also the common verses in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, these very foundational verses. So we have to understand and we should understand these four big points. So as we will read these verses, I just want you, everyone, to understand and put in our minds and our hearts these four big points. So the first one is we have to be thankful. So we have to be thankful in everything God does and did for us. The second point is Jesus Christ himself is the ultimate sacrifice. So he, is, he offered his life for us and for all. According to the book of Hebrews, he did this once and for all. This is not just for me. This is not just for you. This is for everyone because he is the final atonement. He did once and for all. He offered his life for us. So we have to remember, we have to understand. And the third point is we have to remember this. While we are doing this breaking of bread, while we are reading these verses, every time we hear and we heard the, the words breaking of bread, we have to remember, not because our pastors told us, not because the congregation and the church leaders instructed us to do this, but we have to remember always that we are doing this, we are partaking this because of Jesus Christ, in remember of him. So that is a very plain words from the Lord that we will do this in because of him. And the last point, is to proclaim the Lord's death. So remembering what Jesus did is very easy. Remembering while we are partaking, this is very easy. But the most sacred and, must, and the most noble part we can do is to proclaim the Lord's death. Amen? 
So as you are preparing the Lord at the Lord's bread and cup, so can you can you be with us? Can you join with us? Can we raise all the bread? And as I'm reading in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verses 23 to 26, for I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Can we, all, can we eat all the bread? In the same manner, in verse 25, in the same way also he took the cup also after supper saying can we all rise the cup this cup is the new covenant in my blood do this as open as you drink it in remembrance of me can we drink all the cup for as open as you eat this bread and drink the cup you proclaim the lord's death until he comes so this is the most sacred and most noble part we can do not just remembering what the lord did in the in the cross of in calvary but the most and and, and the most important is we have to proclaim the lord death until he comes amen, amen. so praise be to god Blessed morning po. Uh, sa tithes and offering na po tayo. Naririnig po ba ako ng bawat isa po? Amen po. So, hindi na po ako magpapakalayo-layo sa verse. Dito na po tayo sa Hebrews. Uh, I will share the Hebrews uh, chapter 7 verse 5. Ang sabi po dito, In those in, indeed, of the sons of Levi who received the priest's office have commanded in the law to collect a tenth from the people that is from their brethren, although these are descended from Abram. But the one whose genealogy is not traced from the collected a tenth from Abram and blessed the one who had the promises. So, ang tanong po, is it applicable po until today, this um, in uh, giving the tithes, is it applicable po ba until this day? So, ang sagot po, it's the same way, ang, ang pagtatanong po kung uh, applicable pa po it, ba itong old covenant na ito, is the same way as we are questioning also, is God's promises is applicable also hanggang ngayon po ba? It's the same way of asking like that. You know, uh, brothers and sisters, in Hebrew chapter 7, verse 5, the event of that will be seen in Genesis 14, verse 18 to 20, when Abraham gave a tenth of all that he had to, uh, to Melchizedek, which is, uh, the name, which is after the name of uh, King of Righteousness and the King of uh, Peace. He is also the uh, King of Salem. So, when God promises to Abraham in uh, Genesis 17 that he will bless, that I w in Genesis 17 verse 7, that I will establish my covenant within me and you, descendants after you throughout their generations, an everlasting covenant to be God to you and to your descendants after all of you. This is the promise of God to uh, Abraham. So brothers and sisters, God his promise is not broken as well as when he uttered his command to his people remember that the promise and command is for all the descendants of abraham amen po so ang tanong are we the descendants of abraham yun po ang tanong so sabi po sa galatians 3 verse 7 therefore be sure that it is those who are faith who are sons of abraham in verse 8 the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles by faith. So we are the descendants of Abraham, those who are justified by God, those who are justified by God through uh, by faith, justified by God by faith. So we are we believe in God, we are the sons of Abraham. Are we claiming it, brothers and sisters? 
sabi nga po kanina ni, uh, ni Pastor Stewart, we are free to the law of the old covenant, but we are bound to Jesus Christ. Amen? At ang chapter 7 po, ang pinaka, uh, entitled po niyan is Melchizedek, priesthood like Christ. Since, we, since Christ is our priesthood, Jesus Christ confirmed that in Matthew 23, 23 po. Nakalagay po doon, sabi niya, Who to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you tight mint and deal and cumin and have neglected the weightier promises of the law the justice and mercy and faithfulness. But these things you should have done without neglecting others. It means that we should have done these things without neglect, without de neglecting of other things, which is uh, giving our tithes. Amen po. Amen. So, since uh, our Jesus Christ is now our priesthood, He said that I, my shepherds knows me, they hear my voice and follow me. So, are we? Amen po. Hello? Uh, naririnig pa po ba ako ng bawat isa po? Amen. So, um, now, brothers and sisters, in remembering what God has said to us, let us now give our tithes to our Lord. Amen. And let us pray. Thank you, Lord God, for everything that you have given unto us, Panginoon. Lord, we pray that our tithes and our, our offering may be acceptable to you, Panginoon. And this we give to you as we ought to give, O God, because we, are, we believe, O God, Lord, that we are subjected under the kingdom of God, Lord. And we honor your word, Panginoon. As we claim your promises, O God, Lord, we abide in your command, Panginoon. As we are the children of God, O Lord Jesus, we honor your name and we glorify you, Panginoon. And in all aspects, O God, we believe that whatever we do, O God, is always an act of worship and acknowledging the sovereign, powerful God in our life, O God. Thank you so much, O God. And bless our brothers and sisters, Panginoon. Hallelujah. Those who have... Uh, don't have until now their salary. So God, we pray, O oh God, that you will work, Panginoon, sa company nila, Panginoon. And uh, we believe, O oh God, that these situations that we have, O oh God, will never hinder, Panginoon, the work of our Lord, Panginoon, in our life, O oh God, Lord. Thank you, Panginoon, for your sustenance, O oh God, for the provisions, Panginoon, for the strength, O oh God, for everything, O oh God, that comes from you, Panginoon. Hallelujah. And we acknowledge, Panginoon, everything, O oh God, that it is only you, O oh Oh God, and we glorify it to the highest and magnify your works. Thank you so much in Jesus' name. Amen. Hello po, praise God. Go day po sa lahat. Good morning still here. Morning in Qatar and in the Philippines. It's afternoon. So, I believe that everyone is doing great. Amen. Even we are in this our God is the same. Uh, without go uh, much ado, we believe that we do understand the too. And indeed, church, we need a priest. And his name is Jesus. Amen. And every situation, every trial, every circumstance, we need him. We need Jesus in our lives. And even he mentioned in, the, in, in, in his introduction about obedience, the commandments of God, importance of the law of God, but of course, the, the, the importance of the new covenant as well, which is Jesus Christ, was appointed by God forever. There is a guarantee that we have a priest forever. He lives forever. Our king is interceding to, for us. He is the Son of God. Wow, how blessed we are. Hallelujah, how blessed we are that we have our King of kings and the Lord of lords. 
Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's move on. I, I would like also to share to you the blessings for obedience and curses for disobedience as our benediction for chapter 28 of Deuteronomy. Praise God. Hallelujah. So before that, we will pray and give thanks to the Lord for all that He has done. Hallelujah. For, for this kind of pan, pandemic, which is we are very, everyone is affected, but Praise God. We are victorious, church, because until now, we can still give thanks because of what we have, not because of what we've done, but because we have this God, uh, we have Jesus, we have King who covers us, who protects us, who heals us. Amen. Praise God. So let's pray. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you for your goodness, your mercy, Lord, your faithfulness that endures forever in our lives. Thank you for the lives that you have been used, Lord. God, hallelujah, thank you, Lord, for the messenger, for the uh, exhorter, Lord God, for the tithes and offering, for everyone, Lord, that you have being used, Lord God, for the uh, uh, breaking of bread, everyone, Lord, for the everyone that you have been used for today, Lord, we give all the glory and honor to you alone, O God, because it is you are the reason, Lord God, why we're still standing. You are the reason, Lord God, that why we are we are holding our faith because we have a blessed hope which is you, Jesus Christ. And Lord, we extend also our prayer for our dear brothers who are not uh, able, we're not able to be in us an online, Lord God, service. Thank you for their lives. We know that you are uh, with us and you are also be with, with them, oh God. Thank you so much. All the glory belongs to you alone. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And before of that church, this is a blessing for obedience. Let's uh, claim it. Hallelujah that God, His words are true. His promises are true. Here in Deuteronomy chapter 20, 28, verses 1 to 14. Hallelujah. This is the blessings that the Lord um, said. His words. Hallelujah. If you fully obey, let's raise our hands or put our, our hands in our heart. Hallelujah. If you fully obey for the Lord your God and carefully follow all his commands I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all nations on earth. All these blessings will come on you and accompany you if you obey the Lord your God. Verse 3. You will be blessed in the city and blessed in the country. The fruit of your womb will be blessed and the crops of your land and the young of your livestock, the calves of your herds and the lambs of your flocks. Your basket and your, need, your kneading through will be blessed. You will be blessed when you come in and be blessed when you go out. The Lord will grant the enemies who rise up against you will be defeated before you. They will come at you from one direction and flee from you in seven. The Lord will send a blessing on your barns and everything you put on your hands to. The Lord your God will bless you in the land and he's giving you. The Lord will establish you as his holy people and he promised you an oath. If you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in obedience to him, then all peoples on the earth will see that you are called by the name of the Lord and they will, be, and they will fear you. The Lord will grant you abundantly prosperity in the fruit of your womb and the young of your livestock and the crops of your ground in the land he swore to your ancestors to give you. The Lord will open the heavens and the storehouse of his bounty to send rain on your land in season to bless all the works of your hands. You will lend many nations, but will borrow from none. Praise God. The Lord will make you the head and not the tail. 
if you pay attention to the commandments of the Lord your God that I give you this day and carefully follow them, you will always be at the top, never at the bottom. Do not turn aside from any of the commands I give you today, to the right or to the left, following other gods and serving them. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the promises of God, church. Claim it and receive it in the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello. Hello. Kumusta po? Kumusta po? Mga kapatid. Kapatid. Kumusta po? Si Bro Jules, parang nalimpungatan ata. Bro CK, God bless. Nalimpungatan bigla. God bless po. Bro Michael. How are you po? God bless you. God bless you. Mamen, my brother Jules. God bless you, Mamen. Hindi ko pa eh. Paano ba? God bless you, Kai. God bless you, baby. Wow. Bro Jan, Pen, Mustafa Jan, God bless you. Bro Jan, Mustafa Jan. God bless, my man. God bless you. God bless. Hello, po kuya rin eh. God bless you po Jan. Hope you're doing fine and protected. Kuya Nick, kuya Amado, God bless you Jan. Rest of the calibur. God bless you. God bless. God bless you all. Kuya Edwin, kamusta ka? God bless. Miss you all po. God bless. God bless you all po. God bless you all po. My brother Enoch, my brother. How are you my brother? God bless you. How are you my brother? Bless you. Brother Glenn, ang buong mamayat si brother Glenn.